Welcome to the Ohio Bat Working Group's All About Bats video series. My name is Rick Shears and I'm going to talk about bat houses. I'm a concerned citizen who is a bat advocate and I work with homeowners and communities to improve their bat boxes and help them get bats into them that may be vacant. I also work with trying to increase the number of bat boxes around the community and neighborhoods. Shown here are a couple of bat boxes out in Madison County. There are uh, several criteria or specs that go into both design and putting up bat boxes. Um, you want to put them up on poles or on side of a building versus putting them up on trees. You want to have them at a minimum height of at least 15 feet. The higher the better it is actually. And they need to receive sunlight and it's best if they get some morning sunlight at least six to eight hours That's one of the reasons why you don't want to put bat boxes on a tree. They will not re receive the correct amount of sunlight So putting them out in an open area such as it is here and you can see that they're not really that far from water either They also want to make sure you don't have any vegetation underneath you want to have open areas so the bats can exit and enter the underside of the boxes easily without running into debris and other obstacles in their ways and if you have more than one box you can actually put them back to back which I'll explain more about later there are many different designs to bat boxes today the most common we see are the one on the left which is your rectangle or your square shape but we also have bat condos which can hold several thousands of bats, maybe 20, 30,000, depending on the size of the condo. We got rocket boxes. Uh, they, they put them up on poles. I mean, there's there's many different types of designs. But as I mentioned, the most common one we see is the one on the left, which is your square or rectangle shape. A good size for a bat box is the larger, the better. At least 17 inches wide by 20 inches high is a good size. But if you go want to go a little larger, that's that's fine. Chamber size is also very important and it's probably one of the most important things on the design of a bat box. If you look at the box on the left, you'll see the chambers are about three quarter of an inch wide. That's about a good width for a chamber. One inch maybe the max, but I really wouldn't go above one inch. You look at the box on the right, these chambers are almost two inches wide and that's pretty big for the needs for a bat. They don't need anything that big. Uh, and actually, when you start making chambers that are too wide, you're actually opening up to other critters getting in there, infestations from wasps, maybe birds. They prefer a little bit wider, so uh, keep it down to three quarters of an inch to one inch at the most for your chamber size. And as for your number of chambers, the more chambers you have in a bat box, the, the better you have of, of getting bats. Um, this one here, uh, you can see three, four chambers, some five chambers. I've seen some out there, one and two chambers. They're all right, but it's better if you go for multi chambers, at least four chambers or more. Uh, that, this gives the bats chances of regulating the heat. If a chamber is too hot or too cold, they can move to another chamber, which uh, may be a little warmer or a little cooler for them, depending on, on the situation. So multiple chambers is actually better for the bats and like like I mentioned you'll have a better chance of getting bats if you have more than one or two chambers. The color of bat boxes is also very important. As we learned in school darker colors absorb heat a lot better than lighter colors. Ohio can have some cool nights and sometimes even some cool days so a darker color would actually meet the bats needs by keeping them warm on those cool nights a lot better than a lighter color as you see here in the upper left corner I'm not saying that a light color box won't get bats you mean it, it may but a darker color would help them out a lot better than a lighter color because like I said it would keep them warm on those cool nights if you look at this map here on the right side this is by bat conservation international and it breaks it down by where you're at throughout United States on what color of 
box should be to best help serve the needs of the bats. Placement of bat boxes is also very important. Here you see there's a couple of the uh, more common ways to place a bat box is either on the side of a building or on a pole. Again, you want to make sure they're a minimum of at least 15 feet high. The higher, the better. You want to have them, if you put them on a pole, you want to have them at least 20 feet from the edge of the wood. Again, you want to make sure they have that clearing so they can get in and out of the box easily. If you have more than one box, you can put them back to back as you see in this picture here on the right. That'll be fine. You don't want to put them one under another. And if you put them back to back, you first of all, you want to make sure the boxes are facing south, southeast if you're in the northern hemisphere. And the reason is you want to get that six to eight hours of morning sunlight. But if you're putting up two of them back to back like this, it's fine if you face one south and the other one north. That again, you're, you're increasing the number of chambers and you're giving the bats the opportunity. If they're too hot, they can move towards the back box. If they're too cool, they can move towards the front box. You're taking, say, if, if one of these boxes is five chambers, now you're putting two of them there, now you have 10 chambers. You're giving the bats not only more room, but you're giving them the way to regulate their heat and stay warm or cool down. You also want to make sure uh, take into consideration pets and wildlife. Uh, birds of prey, they will prey upon bats, so won't cats if you have a cat. So make sure you put your boxes in places where the bats are going to be safe and they're not going to be preyed upon by other animals because if the bats feel threatened, they will leave or even not take occupancy of the bat box from the beginning. Now here's a couple of mistakes I see people do with bat boxes. One of the biggest one is they put a bat box on a tree. They hear, well, bats, they live in trees. Some bats do, but not the ones that are going to roost in the boxes. Bats do not like their box on a tree for a few different reasons. Uh, one of them that I've mentioned already a couple of times is they don't get any sunlight. So the box isn't going to stay warm because they, they're receiving no sunlight because of the branches and the shade. So do not put a bat box on a tree. Another reason is that they are open to predators. It's easier for predators to get them when they're exiting the, the uh, box. And it can also cause some obstacles if there's other limbs or other things underneath the box. You're, you're putting obstacles in their way. So do not put a bat box on a tree. You also don't want to put them under a security light as is shown here. This security light could get warm and it could heat the box up to temperatures that are not comfortable for the bats. So do not put them under security lights. People put up bat boxes and they think the box is up, everything's good, and I can just sit back and enjoy and watch the bats come moving in. Not always the case. Bat boxes need to be uh, maintained. Um, as you see in the lower left, the underbrush is so thick, the bats are not gonna be able to get in or out of that box. That box is basically useless. It's just decoration. What you wanna do is try to keep the underbrush clear. That's why I mentioned earlier, um, to put the box, if you're putting them on a pole, to put them at least 20 feet from the edge of the woods. If you're going to stick them in like this, you need to go in and you need to clear that underbrush out. Take it all the way down to the ground, not just a few feet, but take it all the way down. And clear it back a little ways around the box. You see in the top uh, center here, the box is starting to peel. You can have maybe some caulking come up. Bats, you don't want to have drafts coming into the box. So you want to make sure any of your joints are clean and sealed with caulking. So every now and then look at your box, check it out and make sure that the cracks, it is not cracking, sealed up with any type of caulking. Maybe you might need to paint it, do a little sanding again. Um, just keep the box looking good and keeping it airtight for the bats. Down here on the bottom right, um, 
This is a wasp infestation. It's one of the biggest infestations you can find on a, a bat box. Uh, you have to get in there and clean it out. Uh, maybe you get it like a doll rod maybe with um, uh, some type of scouring pad on it. Just get in there and try to clean those things out. But what you want to do is you want to do these things, any repairs like this, you want to do in the winter time and you want to make sure there are no bats in there before you start poking around inside there or taking the box down to do any work. Make sure there's no bats in there and it looks clean. Then you can go in there and clear it out. Uh, take out any debris that's inside. If it looks clean, then leave it alone. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it every winter, but just look at it during the winter and, and make sure everything looks good for the coming up spring. And uh, the bats will be happy with that. This is a study done back in 1998-2001 and it's on the Bat Conservation International website under their handbook. You'll notice here mounting location. You'll see the highest one is on wooden or masonry buildings at 64%. Notice how low it is for trees? I mean it, it, it's quite a ways lower than it is, is for poles which is at 52%. The roost chamber height. This is the height inside the box, the chamber height itself, not the height from the ground. You notice again the, the 25 inches or more is the highest one at 64%. As I said earlier, you want the larger the box is, the better off it is. I mentioned 17 width by 20 high. You can actually go higher than that. And if you look at the width of the chamber, again the, the wider it is at 25 inches or more the higher chance of getting bats. The number of chambers, one or two chambers, 50%. Three or four, 50%. Then it jumps up to 65% at five or more chambers. So again, the larger the box, the more chambers, the better off it is. And then of course urbanization, when it's in the city, or it's in the country, you'll notice that it's highest in rural areas. But that doesn't mean we don't have bats in the city, because we do. So because you're in the city or whether you're in the country, uh, bat boxes can also always be beneficial. I hope I was able to provide a better understanding of bat boxes and how you can put them up in your yard. The two areas to pay most attention to are your design and your placement. As long as you follow the uh, criteria that I provided in this video and and uh, you shouldn't have a problem getting some bats into your boxes. It's important to understand though and not get discouraged because bats are not going to move in overnight like, a, like birds may into birdhouses. Bats are not birds. Um, so it may take a few months and it may take a year or two. But you just need to be patient. As long as you provide them with a house that meets their needs, uh, you should get some bats in there hopefully one day soon. Um, there are many places out there where you can buy bat boxes. But again, when you, if you buy one offline, make sure it meets the criteria uh, that meets the needs of the bats. Um, Amazon may have some. Um, and uh, if you buy one from a rehab center or some type of conservation area, the good thing about that is, is your money will go back into rehabilitation and conservation for bats. So that's an advantage of buying it from a place like that versus any other place off the internet. I'd like to thank everybody for listening. If you have any questions about Ohio Bat Working Group, our link is down here on the bottom. You can come on our site and check us out for more information. Bat Week is an international event held every year from October 24th to October 31st. If you'd like to know more about Bat Week, check them out at batweek.org. There are events on there that you may be able to participate in your area. If not, it tells you how you can start something up and create an event for yourself and, and get your community together. Uh, bats are a wonderful thing. We need them in our environment. And we thank you for uh, your interest in putting up some bat boxes or maybe uh, fixing some that you already have. And just keep on supporting our bats. Thank you.